Welcome to the installation video of Hoi Miles HMS 501T. This series of videos consists of five chapters. Overview, Preparation, Microinverter Installation, Network Configuration, and Plant Creation. The installation tutorial applies to the following microinverter models. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained or who have demonstrated relevant skills can install and maintain this microinverter under instructions. In this video, we will guide you through the installation process of a 2 kW roof top PV system, which is composed of four HMS 501T microinverters, AC trunk cable, and four solar panels. First of all, let's take a look at HMS 501T. In the middle of the microinverter silver panel is the parameter label. The lug on the right side is the sub 1G wireless antenna. The connector on the top right is the AC connector, and the connectors below are the DC connectors. The screw hole on the left side of the handle is the ground hole. On the back, there is an LED indicator light to indicate the microinverter's operation status. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. For installation tools, we need electric screwdriver, diagonal cutter, wire stripper, crimping tool, torque wrench, and steel tape. As for other auxiliary tools, we need M8 bolts, metal tie wrap, grounding accessories, marker pen, grounding cable, DC extension cable, and 3-core AC cable. The microinverter accessories we will use are HMS ceiling cap, HMS connection cable, HMS extension connector, HMS trunk connector, HMS cable terminal connector, and HMS disconnect tool. Installers should wear overalls, gloves, helmets, and safety ropes. Now, we come to the installation of the microinverter. Before everything begins, we should mark the appropriate installation location of the microinverter according to the plan. Step 1. Fix the screws at the predetermined place on the rail. Hang the microinverter on the screws. Please note that the label of the microinverter should be facing the panel. Tighten the screws. Then, route a continuous grounding cable through grounding brackets of each microinverter to the AC grounding electrode that conforms with local regulations. When all the microinverters are installed, plug the AC connector of the microinverter branch into the HMS trunk connector until it clicks. Then cover the unused end with the HMS ceiling cap to make it watertight. Select the HMS connection cable of a suitable length and plug it into the trunk connector until you hear the click. Please make sure the marks on the engaged ports are the same. Now, let's move on to the next microinverter. Plug the microinverter and the connection cable into the trunk connector. Connect all microinverters in the same way. Now, let's make the AC and cable with the trunk connector of the last microinverter in the system. First, prepare an AC cable of a suitable length. The cable should cover the distance from the end of the AC trunk cable to the distribution box. The HMS connector can be disassembled into six parts, and you should slide the parts onto the AC cable in the correct order. Strip off the outer jacket with a diagonal cutter. Use a wire stripper to strip the insulation to a suitable length. Insert the conductor into the terminal pin and crimp it tightly. Next, insert the crimped wires into the wire holder. Make sure that LNPE lines are in the correct slots. Plug the fixed wires into the HMS cable connector and firmly tighten the nut with the HMS disconnect tool or a torque wrench. Connect the AC and cable to the last HMS trunk cable connector and fix the connector with tie wraps for each connector. Finally, peel the serial number label from each microinverter and affix them to the corresponding place on the installation map. Connecting PV modules is to connect the microinverters to the PV modules. Please determine whether you need DC extension cables based on your situation. In this project, we used extension cables for some modules. First, 
Place the PV modules onto the rail and use the DC extension cables to connect the PV modules to the microinverter. Finally, move the PV modules above the microinverter and fix them. Repeat the above steps to connect all PV modules. Now, we need to connect the AC and cable to the distribution box. Please note that the grid connection and system energizing shall be performed by professionals after obtaining the permit from the grid operator. Connect the distribution box to the local grid to complete the microinverter installation. Don't forget to go through the checklist to see if every step is done. Next is the setup process for connecting the microinverter to the network via the S-Miles installer app. Before we begin, please prepare your DTU for data collection and ensure that you have updated your S-Miles installer app to the latest version. Type in the username and password. Click Login and you will be directed to the Plants page. Click the O and M icon at the bottom of the page and then click the Network Configuration. Then the app will alert you that Wi-Fi is not connected. Click Go to Set to redirect to the WLAN page. On the WLAN settings, select and connect to DTU Hotspot. Return to the O&M screen and click Network Config icon. On the Wi-Fi settings, manually input the name and password of the Wi-Fi to be connected and then click the Send to DTU button. The network configuration takes about one minute to complete. Please wait patiently. Now, we're going to start plant creation. Let's go back to the Plants page. Click plus sign on the upper left and start building your plant. First, you need to fill in the name of your plant and other basic information. Please avoid duplicate plant names. Then select the plant type and enter the capacity of your system. Please note that the plant type cannot be changed once it is created. So please select one that suits your installation situation and the installed capacity. Next, select your time zone. Please make sure you select the right time zone because a wrong one will affect the display of your daily power generation. Then select the area where your power plant is located. The map will automatically locate your current area. You can locate the area either by dragging and zooming the map with gestures or by manually entering detailed address information. Then choose your region. You can upload a picture of your plant if you want to add the cover. Click Next. Go to the Owner Information page. Click the icon in the upper right corner to add an account. In this step, you need to set up a login account, password, username, and fill in email and phone information. Then click Save. And you can see the owner information you have added. Then click Next to add devices and set layouts. Click Add DTU and add the DTU serial number. The serial number can be entered manually or added by scanning the barcode. After completing the serial number entry, click Add Micro and enter the microinverter serial number. Then click the Finish button below. Fill in all required information and then click Next to complete this step. Then we can move on to lay out your plant. You can change the array name Fill in the azimuth and inclination of your modules and then select the layout pattern. Click Save and enter the PV module layout interface. Adjust your modules according to the actual installation and click Next when the layout is complete. Upload the installation map of the power plant or you can also directly click Next to start more settings of the power station. Fill in the rest of information about the plant. You can choose whether or not to enable the relevant options to export management, power balance config, allow the owner to view the layout and networking, and then click Finish. Now, your power plant is turned on and starting. Once the connection is complete, you can see the detailed operation status of the microinverters in the power plant you have just created, and control the microinverters in a remote and timely manner. That's all about this video. Thank you for watching.